So I have to learn new code bases from time to time, a lot actually. I hop into new code bases more than I hop into new haircuts. And it used to be one of the hardest parts of the job, but now that I have a bit of a method to my madness, I actually really enjoy it. I know, call me crazy, but regardless of what type of developer you are, you're gonna to have to learn a new code base at some point, an existing code base. You could be a new dev coming into a job, learning that code base. You could be a seasoned developer switching teams or companies, or you could be an open source contributor trying to learn that code base so you can contribute to it. So in this video, I just kinda of wanna go through a code base and share how I learn new code bases. And I thought a fun one would be Excalidraw. There were so many options, like hopping into WSL, since a lot of that was just open source, but I figured something that was React, TypeScript, and actually very interactive and fun to play with would be probably the easiest to convey my thoughts and how I learned that code base. So what I like to do first is read the documentation for the code base. As you can see, we have some docs right here for anything from, so the introduction, the docs for the docs. Okay, it's just an outline, but <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And of course you could do it in a code sandbox and you can actually use code sandbox to code everything. Uh, I don't know what kind of maniac does that, but if you wanna make a small little adjustment, you can, and you can actually submit pull requests and things of that nature, do everything straight from this. But of course you wanna do it locally. So I would read through the requirements, obviously clone the repo, get on your local machine, install the dependencies, start the server. Unfortunately, they use yarn, but you know, you can't pick and choose sometimes. And then I would just read through all of this, test out some of these commands, reformat all files with prettier, see what it does, run the tests, see what it does, and just play around with all of this. I actually have XCaliDraw here. So if I wanted to do yarn test, then it's going to go through all of the tests and well we can come back to this a little bit later and see if they all pass how many are skipped things of that nature but yeah just the documentation whatever's available contributing guidelines read through all of it and then of course they're going to have naming conventions semantic prefixes for your commit messages just so everything's nice and clean this is technically how you're supposed to write commit messages do any of us do it i don't but if you're contributing to this code base or there are any sort of specifications for the code base you're working in and learning, follow it. And then read through the JSON schema, the attributes, the values, get a little bit understanding of the example here, and just quite literally read through all of it. Because you may not understand it all at first, but it will give you a little bit of a, a bit of an understanding of how the code base is formatted and things of that nature. But what's most important, the way I look at it, is like when you're in school and your teacher tells you to read ahead for the next class, you're reading stuff that your teacher never taught you, but that's so you can get like a first impression of it. You may not understand all of it or any of it, but it's in your mind one way or another so that when the teacher teaches you this actual material, it'll you have some like aha moments. Oh, I remember reading about that. And then the teacher talks about it and then you have a question about it because that's your second impression with that concept and you're able to ask intelligent questions. And then once you do homework on the same concept, that'll be your third impression. And the more impressions with work with a code base, the better, the more you're going to learn it. So read through all of this, play around with it, and then poke through the code just to kind of see the format. Don't spend too much time aimlessly going through the code, but if you want to just kind of see, okay, this is the Kelly Draw wrapper. All right, how's this kind of working over here? Initial state, and just, I mean, you know what you're looking at. You're probably going to be familiar with the type of code base that you're learning. If not, well, Guess what? You just have the opportunity to learn more. Oh, and look, we have 956 past tests, 47 skipped, one to do. We can go ahead and quit that. But what do you do if the code base has bad docs, no docs at all, or missing some docs that you like, like the architecture or some sort of guide, or you just don't like the way it's worded or formatted, well, that's where I would recommend Augment Code, who is the sponsor of today's video, but that's because I reached out to them because I use them for doing just this for one main reason, and that is they are the best AI coding assistant I've found for medium to large code bases. And that's kind of like their bread and butter. Obviously it works on all code bases, but the only coding agent with a context engine that understands your code base and how you build software. So if we come back over here, 
You can see augment right here is an extension in VS code for me, and I've already had it index the entire code base. So what I can do now is say, make some proper documentation for this entire code base, architecture diagrams, guides, all of it. And then I can just go ahead and say, do it. And we'll let that run. We'll come back to it a little bit later in this video. Oh, look, architecture overview. It's already getting rolling. We have a nice mermaid chart right here. Quick start MD. Okay, we'll go through that later. And then what I would recommend doing next is playing around with the software as the end user so you get an understanding of how it is used. So I can swipe here, erase, erase, erase. I can type some stuff if I want. I can pop this over. I can turn it to light theme. Oh, okay, let's turn that back to dark theme. There's a Zen mode that I'm in right now. I can change the font sizes. This is kind of like a, uh, this does feel like an ad for Excali Draw. It's not, there's Excali Draw, there's TL Draw, there's a bunch of other whiteboard type stuff, but Excali Draw is a lot of fun to use. So that's what I like to do first, read the docs and use the app. I mean, pretty, pretty simple and straightforward if you ask me. And while I did say poke around the code base, make sure you do it with intent. The way I like to do it is come through here and um, this can be combined with using the app. And that is, okay, I'm drawing right here. That's being saved. I'm using the eraser right here, swiping it away. How does that work? Well, what I can do is come over here and try to find the eraser. Oh, this one's pretty interesting. Show selected shape actions. So this is just based on whichever one is selected. We want to show it. And then that gets selected elements right here. So here's more code in selecting the elements. Oh, and then what is this? Action canvas.tsx, action finalize.tsx. All right, so if app state .active tool type equals eraser, then that is going to be the active tool. And you can read everything about action finalize or what were we at before? Action canvas. We're importing is eraser active. That would be from app state, right? From app state, yeah. Action toggle eraser tool. So that's what's going on here. If it's active, do this, else do that. And you just kind of go through, I kind of go through and just read through the code. And while I do enjoy doing things manually, and I highly recommend that you do things mostly manually, just so you get that experience with it, sometimes I like to ask things like this. For example, when I draw a rectangle in Excali Draw, what code fires on mouse down? Where does the shape get added to state? Which components re-render? Where does undo get triggered? And I'm not just gonna read this verbatim, I'm going to hop into the actual files and see the mouse down event triggers on pointer down in inapp.tsx. And we can just read where on pointer down is being used throughout this code base 25 times, but not only on pointer down, we also have update gesture on pointer down this event. And what does it do? In our specific instance, when I draw a rectangle, it calls create generic element on pointer down, which creates a new rectangle element. And here you can see some of the math that goes down pointer down state origin X origin Y. So I would just kind of go through this and read it all. What does it do next? Shape added to state on mouse move drag as you drag to size the rectangle because you can customize the things that you draw and the things that you type. And you can see just how everything changes by reading through this as well as exploring the code that this is referencing to see exactly how it's working in the code. The reason why I like to do that is because it gives me a, a clear mental model of the data flow, kind of how it works. It just helps me visualize it. I don't know if that happens for everybody, but it, but it does for me again. So this is the official augment code integration because I want you to have more understanding of what it actually does, not just in the how I use it and learning a new code base. So augment code is the AI coding assistant that actually understands your code base because it has a very nice context engine and is quite literally built for large code bases and anything smaller. When you're using it with a fresh code base, you have this nice index code base button. And what that does is it creates a rich semantic map of the entire repo. So when you ask it a question, it's grounded in actual context. You can ask it to explain logic, generate tests, track down bugs, and onboard new teammates. And it'll respond with answers that actually make sense because it's not flying blind. 
And I know many of y'all work with giant monolithic enterprise code bases or giant open source code bases or just larger code bases in general. And you're not just trying to whip up a little hexagon that bounces a ball all inside of it. And that's the beauty of augment code because it can handle large code bases with ease and it's language agnostic. You can plug it into your code editor, VS Code, JetBrains, NeoVim, Vim, or in your CLI. Augment code is built for serious devs. It's built for you. So try it using the link down in the description below. I think you're really going to like it. But this next part is probably what helps me the most, and that is relying on my teammates to give me a task or multiple tasks that'll serve as a is a really good entry point into the code base for me to learn the key components. So that way I am actually contributing to the project, which helps everybody while simultaneously learning the most important parts of it or one of the more important parts of it. And if you're contributing to open source, you can ask the other contributors or maintainers or company behind the repository the same exact question. I wanna learn the code base. I wanna to contribute to it which is the best first task for me to do all of that. But if not, I already put in these commands because I tried to record it before, but I felt like I was rambling a little too much, just like I am right now. So anyway, what would be a good first issue for a contributor to fix in this repo? I'm asking augment code again, because it actually understands this code base that is 160,000 lines of code, like actual code, not spaces, not comments, not or, or blank lines, just actual code. And I needed to specify my goal is to learn the code base or at least a key component of it when completing the task. Remember, this is in the event where I do not have a team member or anybody to give me a task. So that means I need to invent a task in order to learn the code base if that's my primary goal. And Augie here says, I'd recommend focusing on a task that touches core functionality rather than peripheral features, like add a rounded rectangle option to the rectangle tool. Maybe they don't want this, but this will allow you to learn the code base while writing actual code. And that's pretty nice. Files you'd interact with, which are these, because a large code base, medium code base could be rather overwhelming when trying to find all of the files you need to interact with. So that's a pretty nice thing. Or you can implement a simple keyboard shortcut, things of that nature. I like how this is, it gives me multiple options and it gave me the files you interact with. That's really nice. Anyway, that wraps up that section. Or I'm recommending this to you because I personally don't like doing it. Write tests for the code base. That is a fantastic way to learn the code base, learn the code because it allows you to verify your understanding of it. And if you break something, that's, that's even better. All right, so what have we done so far? We've read the docs, we've used the app, we've poked around the code base with intent, just kind of on our own, and then we've completed tasks assigned to us by team members. What do we wanna do next? Pair programming. Pair programming is awesome. I know, I know for new devs, it can be intimidating and things of that nature. Oh, they're gonna find out that I'm an imposter and all this stuff, but pair programming, I, I, I would recommend diving right in. If you're in a new code base, what I would say is to look over somebody else's shoulder. Watch how they interact with the code base, interact with the app as they are coding up, completing whatever task, see what tests they write, things of that nature, and just kind of, you're watching how they come through, how they navigate. Everybody's workflow is gonna be a bit different. Some may use an AI like this. Some may be using, you know, this search over here. Almost primarily, some people are going crazy, closing their eyes in Vim, and they can just do everything through straight feel. But <laughs> just watch how your team members who know the code base interact with the code base, and then you can actually go through and do some real pair programming with them. Remember, it's not this job is not about you looking smart. It's about you getting smart fast, as fast as possible. And you admitting that you don't know X, you don't know Y is how you do that. And as you go along, you can ask questions. And as you do all of this right here, take down notes. Whatever questions you may have or things that you don't understand or something that you think you understand, write all of that down and then ask somebody or talk to one of your teammates and explain your understanding of the thing you think you understand and have them test you on it and teach you where your gaps are. Learning of the code base is not just something that I like to just casually 
pick up as I go over the next one, two, three months. It'll happen that way to some degree, but if I can give myself the best head start and learn as much of the code base and how it works, the technical decisions, the business logic of it within the first one to two to three weeks, then the next two to three months or beyond then are going to be so much easier, so much better. Six months from now, I'm going to be much better at contributing, a much better team member, a much better software engineer because I took that time to really hone in and focus on learning the code base. So once you go through all of these things, whoop, repeat, that's, that's not a very good arrow, repeat. Read the docs again, now you'll understand even more. And when you're reading the docs, maybe based on some of your experience, you can contribute to the documentation. And now when you use the app, you'll have more of an understanding of all of this that, remember when I said just it helps me visualize when I, okay, I draw here, I can kind of see how everything changes over in the code base. You've done that so much over a month or two that now, when you do this, it's kind of like second nature where you kind of can visualize what code is doing what as you draw things, as you erase things, as you upload a picture, as you type things and then come over here and move them around and resize them and change this. You look at it through an entirely new lens or I look at it through an entirely new lens. Oh yeah, and back when you're contributing to the docs, this may take a bit to get to the point where you feel comfortable doing it, but add things that are missing. Diagrams or flow charts, things that help you that you think can help others, internal guides so it can help out the next person who will be in the shoes that you were just in the first time you read the docs. And one more thing, when learning a new code base, that is understand the domain. Software is built for something. Know what that something is. If you're building something for designers, learn how those designers work. If you're a developer building some sort of stock trading platform, then you should probably have some understanding of financial markets. And again, I keep saying you, this is what I do. <laughs> I really need to get a used to just like for these videos. This is what I do. And just like I recommended y'all do this right here, I also took down notes, so I'm gonna make sure that I didn't forget anything important. Don't be afraid to ask basic questions. Understand why behind assigned tasks, like in a business context and technical rationale so you can make better architectural decisions and aid in future problem solving. Because if we were to come over here, so projects, backlog and roadmap, okay, pan canvas using keyboard in view mode, why? Why are we building that? And that'll just enhance your understanding. Oh, I did almost forget one thing, and that's actually one of the biggest reasons why I started this YouTube channel in the first place, and that is learn by teaching. Oh, I guess I did address that. When you have an under, you think you have an understanding of something, try to teach it to a team member, have them test you on it and call them out. I did mention that. Okay, I'm rambling at this point. That's how I learn a new code base. Subscribe, like, I'll see you on the next one.